Hello, subscribers, followers, uh, loved ones. Thank you for following the page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We are so thankful and welcome you to our channel. And thank you for subscribing and following us. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'm so happy to share this knowledge to more people I can reach. The more knowledge and gifts I can share with other people. So thank you and welcome today. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. I run the Chemistry Channel and a Facebook page and store. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, and again, my name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. Uh, and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a, a book review and I'm also uh, is going uh, is confirming some things that uh, that I the work that I have been doing in meditation this new form of meditation that they call shamanic journey uh, I've learned so many things by coming in contact with the Orishas and talking to Elekba uh, I've learned many things about consciousness and really how to contact those ancient ancestors or those deities and them explaining me how uh, humans are able to come in contact with these deities so it's been a very interesting journey uh, and and while I was doing the research on the things that my spirit guides the ancestors and uh, the Orishas uh, were telling me uh, I've got so many confirmation accidentally running into information while questioning the information that I learned in meditation is something uh, once we start doing the work the universe will start speaking to us and sending us messages uh, on our journey so I've been uh, steadily getting messages of you guys have watched uh, my latest um, a YouTube video you know while I've been doing this I had someone to come to my house and give me a shaman dagger uh, so uh, more confirmation on my journey uh, and I've had more uh, confirmation before I received that dagger I ran in the, into this information but today I'm deciding to share it since I've finished the research uh, on the information that I received in meditation what I did learn uh, when the Orishas told me that they were in another part of the universe that no one think is anything is going on and everything from the universe, uh, everything uh, was born out of this part of the universe, this oldest part of the universe. Uh, I researched it and there is a place that's 14 billion years old, 6,000 light years away that everything began from in the universe. So that was right. Uh, this this book that I'm about to review called the foundation of psycho let me look at it the foundation of psycho uh, kinesis by Hawkins MG I'll leave the title of uh, the foundation of psychokinesis the essential knowledge uh, by Hawking MG I'll leave the title of this book here uh, and maybe a link so you can find it but I certainly will leave the title of this book here so you can find it. Uh, I thought it was very odd because it didn't say anything about the things that I was learning in meditation. Uh, yet, you know, I was drawn to read this book because I, I was looking for another book or something else and ran into this book. And when I started reading the summary of it, you know, what it was about, then I was like, hey, this book is really, uh, this book is really about what I learned in meditation. What an odd name. I would have never chose to um, read this book. But, uh you know according on my experience but when I read the summary I was like yeah this book is right on target about what I experienced so I decided to um, read the book and it confirmed a lot of what the Orisha was telling me about everything in the universe was made of now I've been in this metaphysical field for a while now and uh, and I even went to metaphysical school but uh, it was never described to me in a way that the Orisha was describing to me and uh, the way that described to me from that angle, uh, that perception, that perspective, it really gave me, uh, you know, it, it, it really shifted my perception, my paradigm on the thoughts, you know, how we really, my, my concept on how we're really connected to the all mind, the universal mind. And so I thought I would come here today and share 
you know, what I learned in this book. I'm going to review some of the highlight things in this book. And I'm going to uh, discuss a little bit, uh, give a little bit of discussion on the book and give my thoughts uh, on the book. Uh, this is a really insightful book. It, it really gave me a lot of understanding of what, why, and how I'm experiencing this in meditation. How I'm able, how we, how we all humans are able to tap into this and all have these capabilities. So, you know, and this book explains, you know, why we are not really connecting uh, with, with this all mind. Why we're not tapping into our abilities and how we can really uh, start tapping into it. And what is... Uh, this substance that the Orisha showed me in meditation, they really explained what this substance was called. And uh, they, they explain, uh, this book explains it from a scientific psychological perspective. Uh, uh, again, a spiritual science. There is no reason why we shouldn't be understanding the realm of spiritualism. Uh, scientists have already mapped out the uh, inner workings of consciousness. This is why we have robots. This is why we have computers. They understand how our consciousness work, how information work. Uh, we can get on the internet and, and type in what we're looking for, and it comes in like that. It comes up on, on our uh, web search just like that. The mind operates in the same thing. Once we uh, decide that we want to have these experiences and we want to learn about different things, our mind will open up and the universe will give us access uh, to this information. So, and we just only have to uh, re educate ourselves, reprogram, tear down some of those old belief systems, and start tapping into this. Uh, this, this, I want to call it, uh, you know, the angels call it, a, it's really an upgrade. Looking at it from a, a, a technology point of view, these are upgrades. These are upgrades. We may call it evolving, humans call it, call it evolving. Uh, becoming more, becoming better. But in technical terms, we will call it uh, upgrading. So this is the upgrading that we need to do in our consciousness to tap into this inner power, you know, this this power that we have access to. We've just been, uh, been improperly educated on, uh, uh, on our abilities. So let me dive in here. I don't want to uh, ramble on, but let me dive in here and explain, uh, give more confirmations and stuff about, uh, to me, and also to empower, encourage you on your evolution and your upgrading on your spiritual journey. So, uh, let me go, let me dive in. In this and other books from Wisdom Master Press, we've adopted the convention utilizing the term non-ordinary for events that demonstrate the ability of an individual to manipulate physical reality in a psychokinetic manner. That is not ordinarily seen or accepted in the Western world. So you'll see that in many of the Western beliefs in the Western world and the Western thinking and the Western consciousness, they just don't accept these things as fact. But that's starting to change through the New Age movement. Like I said, be careful in the New Age movement too. Uh, but in the New Age movement and even... Uh, some of us uh, are starting to go back to the ancient teachings, spiritual teachings and spiritual practice of, the, uh, of our ancient ancestors or the first indigenous people. We're starting to adopt some of those. And even that alternative uh, medicine, it's all about going back to those roots. So some of us are going back in the Western world. You're starting to see a slow shift, uh, upgrade in consciousness. Both, science, uh, by, both the science of physics philosophy of metaphysics have vital roles to play in reaching a work a working understanding of such non-ordinary abilities as psychokinesis and extra sensory perception physics fulfills the roles of putting the understanding on a firm scientific foundation and metaphysics has as both its primary purpose and its only legitimate reason for existing the role of answering humanity's most fundamental Exist, existential questions. Religion has never really done this, even though it ferociously claims to do so. If you understand, as do quantum physics, that, that space, time, solidity, and separations are illusions, 
and believe as do some 92% of people that our consciousness transcends death, then you've reached the realization that our five senses do not perceive or communicate to us all truly to us all that truly exists and that our current conceptual model of physical reality falls short of encompassing the full extent of true reality. So they're letting you know what you're looking at, you're, you know, what you're seeing with your eyes, there's more going on. There's more going on. And you can tap into that uh, with, with your mind. It said, insofar as scientific study of paranormal phenomenon, the history of experimental evidence goes back several centuries. As is, as, let me go, I'm, I'm skipping some, okay is unnecessary to discuss here far relevant is the modern evidence emerging respected institution utilizing state-of-the-art technology as one of the numerous example princeton's engineering and anomalies research program which operates under the aegis of princeton university school of engineering with the agenda of studying the interaction of the human consciousness with the sensitive physical devices systems and processes and developing co complementary theoretical models enable a better understanding of the role of consciousness. So he lets you know that these studies and stuff have been going on at these universities to really uh, map out con consciousness. And there you see uh, leaps in technologies as well. Uh, that That was in the section of knowledge of the hidden and, I, and there's another some more juicy stuff that i highlighted that i'm going to go over in here that i think i thought it was really juicy uh quantum physics provides modern version of ancient spirituality in a in a universe made out of energy everything entangled everything is one and this was said by bruce lipton phd the world is a construct of our minds, sensations, perceptions, memories. It is, a conven it is convenient to regard it as ex existing objectively on its own, but it certainly does not. Erwin Schrodinger, Nobel Laureate and winner of the Max Planck Medal. Okay, this is what he had to say about it. I thought that, and these are physics, these are psychologists and physics. Uh, the ancient wisdom traditions, great masters and sages, purpose and answer. And it was admirable expressed to me that consciousness, energy, and matter are wholly interconnected. That they are at some higher level of reality, one and the same. Yet in the physical dimension of space and time are perceived and experienced as different, at least by an ordinary observer. We think of, perceive, and experience the physical world as a solid and real Actually, it is nothing more than energy, than an energy construct. A unity, a unity of consciousness producing in an individual awareness patterns of, of perceived symbols. We consent to, we call real, yet which continually shift to reflect the aspiration and dreams of the perceiver. Simultaneously different for each and every, each for each and the same for all, the vast universe with billions of galaxies, the stars and their planets, mountains, valleys, highlands, deserts, the seas, rivers, gardens of life that seem in every niche, niche, elephants, bears, cats, birds, butterflies, and of course all of us, all solidity, premise in the physical realm are unquestionably illusions, conceivable, only consciousness is real and eternal for consciousness is a living universe okay so they're explaining to you what consciousness really is and these are scientists now these are psych psychologists the knowledge that conveys true power has a primordial origin thought to have originally been transported from a anti-devolian mid-atlantic civilization of prehistory long disappeared from our world so they're letting you know there was ancestors so far in prehistory that have harnessed this power of consciousness and create everything that we're looking at right now okay this knowledge 
offering the illumination and guidance which is truly and fully understood can significantly transform one's life. So once you know this knowledge and you understand this, you can start really transforming your life and taking your power back. Just imagine if we would have been conditioned with this ancient knowledge when we were young. Uh, it, we, we, we would have accomplished so many things. We would have accomplished so many things. Okay. Going on. Uh, the more developed the individual consciousness, the more persistently it was it seeks it seek its true source, like a child strayed from his parent, a wandering longing for home. It is capable of patient study and meditation. It may find the latter down which it came and will climb back to its heights if you desire the unseen essence passionately and strive with dedication then perhaps in some moment when all noise of sense is still you will find yourself one with the true reality see the, most of us that's on this journey we're seeking here we're seeking there we're the true seeker uh that spirit inside you that divine spark is trying to find its way back home to that unified form of consciousness that's what this uh these levels of consciousness is all about is going back where we came from consciously realizing uh the real power of who we are and and that that has been and uh, that's one of our upgrades that's 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 one of our programs so to speak that's innately put already in us if we follow it but most of us don't follow it because I go on with that. I don't want to leap ahead in this discussion. But most of, most of us don't follow it because we've been conditioned by society to not follow it. Okay? Uh, you must allow yourself time each day to reflect upon the greater scope of life. The world you see around you is but an illusion. The truth of things lies not in the world without, but, but the world within. The universe exists not outside you, but within you. So they telling you that you are creating your universe within. Okay, the universe. You, 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 you. Um, we're under the impression that everything on the outside is happening to, to us. No, you, you, you are creating these experiences on the outside of you. So when you start doing the inner transformations, when you start lining things up and really going within. You can change uh, the experiences that you have on the outside of you, okay? The universe, not, not outside of you, but within your consciousness, that which appears to be external is not. It is only a reflection of which lies deep within. So that's why it's so important to pay, uh, uh, pay, pay very close attention to your environment when you're going to do a meditation. What kind of messages are you uh, getting from people? What kind of uh, um, contact are you having with people? What kind of animals are you seeing? What numbers are you seeing? What type of experience are you having? So that's very important uh, when you are you start meditating and really start trying to connect with this all mind with the universe okay uh, i guess some more juicy stuff energy represents the work of physical system it's capable of in changing from an existing state to another specified state energy is simply energy objectified is a key understanding all that exists in consciousness consciousness is the only real all s is merely an appearance the result of your particular format of consciousness so i'm going to talk about this for a minute there are many states of consciousness okay uh, uh many of us what meditation does like you said what meditation does meditation helps you to reflect Meditation actually helps you to go into that alter state and go look at your uh, life or what happened today as a movie and seeing how you can change behaviors in yourself to get more, um, to get the uh, manifestations that you desire out of your life. They really help you reflect and do those changes that you need to do. That's what meditation uh, helps you do. And, and it's supposed to uh, uh, activate an altered state of consciousness within the mind. 
some people have uh, trouble uh, experiencing altered states of consciousness. That's why many of our uh, ancestors, they did dancing, they did drumming. That's a way to help your, yourself to go to uh, altered state of consciousness. Now, when they did journey work or deeper work, they use a waska. They use all types of uh, herbal uh, herbs to go into these deeper states of con uh, consciousness. Shrooms. I talked about that in one of my videos. If you're interested in going deeper, uh, those certainly provide. Uh, those are excellent ways. I, I advocate it. I encourage it. Uh, you know to really have those profound experiences. You know, some people may disagree with me, but I'm an advocate for it because I know how it is personally enhanced my spiritual practices. Okay? And I, our ancestors did it. It was good for them, so I think it, it's, it's good, you know, uh, for those who are ready to go down that path. Okay? But there's different perspectives that you can have on consciousness, too. And I'm going to go into my personal experience. Uh, you have a consciousness where you're watching yourself like on a movie screen, okay? Uh, you have dreams like, you have dream states like that too, where you're just watching yourself and you know it's a dream because you're watching it like a movie. And then you have those states where you're in it. Have you ever been in a dream and, and, and you're doing an activity like running, jumping, or falling and it really feels so real because you feel yourself, you feel the sensation and everything but in the back of your mind, you know it's a dream, but it feels so real. Okay, that's another. I would like to call that one-dimensional. Uh, it could be called something else scientifically, but I'm going to use my terms and my understanding right now uh, in the video because this is my experience. So it's like a, a one-dimensional, okay? And then you have those other states where you can jump in and out of the movie to the movie perception to the one-dimensional perception where you're jumping in and out of, of these states okay uh and you uh, and you know it's something and then you'll have you will not only start having those uh when you have integrated when you have integrated these perceptions uh and you really understand these perceptions and you know how to use them uh to um, you know how to use them to manifest, you'll see yourself doing it in real life. You'll see yourself living it out. And then you'll have, then you'll really start questioning what is reality. Okay? Because you'll be able to look back at things, take a look, take a uh, look back, you know, a step back and kind of look at the big picture and everything. And then you'll be able to actually Go inside and start controlling some of these uh, emotions, behaviors that you have. And you'll start seeing that uh, you start changing your reality that you experience too. And then you will realize with your mind, you're doing all of this with your mind. So you got all these perspectives that you're able to really shift and make these changes there because you're able to view things from another you're not just reacting anymore you're responding meditation help you to really uh widen your per perspective and give you other options okay and give you a new way of looking at things too with uh, looking at things from a different perception okay uh ultimately all consciousness is precisely the same in that it, it is of the same source and substance different only in or in this organization but that that may or may not be perceptible depending on the extent of awareness to the perceiver matter is energy and energy is an expression of consciousness thus all energies energy is ordered and organized by higher expressions of consciousness than itself so i talked about i already talked about this so i'm not going to go into that i've already talked about that in a uh Excuse me, in another video, if you, uh, what was that I did? The Orishas, uh, what are the Orishas and all that? I talked about that uh, in Consciousness. I think I talked a little bit about uh, that. What are archetypes? It's art in the archetype video if you want to know more about that. Beliefs about nature of life and world giving rise to repetitive pattern thoughts and consistent in images in the inner eye of the minds. Those exact patterns of thought and inner images create all the experiences you encounter in life. 
be aware that this explains why each person perceives endless proofs that their views of life and the world are accurate. Their beliefs create their life, yet they imagine that life creates their belief. This can be difficult to overcome. So people, you know, people have a hard time uh, understanding that they're creating this reality, that they really have this power because they're letting their belief uh, create their life, okay? And yet life is creating, their life is creating uh, their beliefs. And this can be difficult to overcome. So some people, they have a problem uh, shattering, turn down those old belief systems. Uh, I'm going to say receiving the upgrade. You know, some of them really, they, they stay in that old school. I'm going to call it, they stay in that old school mindset. They never upgrade. Uh, now you must see the beauty of the storm. Okay. Hold on, I want to go on. Okay, and one of the uh, one of the ancients says, "You must see the beauty of the storm, see the magnificent, the ma the power, the energy, the awesome, the wonder wonder of it all. Blend with this energy. Then there is no longer here and the storms there. There is no longer a here and a there. There is only unity of energy. A unity in your consciousness within the storm is subsumed, where you." Where your consciousness expands to encompass the storm, then the intent of your thoughts, images will manifest in the storm. Then you will know absolutely certainly you you can do this. You may accomplish whatever you desire. You may turn the storm away, dissipate the storm, turn into something else, whatever you wish. Be at one with the storm and it will be one with you. So he's letting you know once you start knowing how to imprint your uh, thoughts upon this divine consciousness once you know, know, begin to know how to do that and knowing how to go ahead and integrate with this this all mind consciousness and imprint your thoughts and, and, and images upon it it will begin to manifest it will begin to happen for you once you you understand that these thoughts that's why i say be very mindful of your thoughts and what you allow them to come through there but once you understand that you are doing this and that you are imprinting this, it's like an empty canvas. Universe is like an empty canvas, okay? Uh, and you're 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 just painting the picture that you want to experience, the movie, or you know you want to experience, okay? It's just like that. It is the canvas to where you can create your own experiences and your own life. If that makes sense to you. Love can do no harm to love. It is impossible. It is impossible. Love has no opposite. There is only love unity or lack of awareness of love. Separation is an illusion, but an, effect, but an effective one if you believe it and must therefore live with the powerlessness that goes with such a false belief. Okay. So he's letting you know, and we're we're evolving back to that uh, unity of love. Uh, we're 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 evolving back to that. That's where we're trying to. That's why you have everyone that's trying to get back into these ancient teachings. That's why you got all of us. You know, many of us. I don't care what race you are. You know, many of them are trying to evolve back to what they are. That that's really what they're trying to do when they go back and they try to. Uh, look at this knowledge and start to upgrade. You see that with yoga. You see that with meditation. That's what that's all about. Uh, it is important for you to understand that it is society and culture that pre predetermine what you perceive of life. What you believe yourself to be. What powers you believe yourself to have and what you are able to accomplish. What you are exposed to and what you are taught from very early age through your entire life largely defines and determines perception and that conditioning ordinarily excludes all but a tiny reflection of the true reality and the true nature of your inherent power the reality of masses is a consensual communal reality so it took a few of them 
It's a few people that got together and decided to create this reality that they experienced. You see that uh, the duality in society, the duality in religion, they decided to make that belief real for them. They decided not not to accept anything else but that and they the, and live in that belief system. Okay? But that duality is really uh it's really it's really stopping, hindering uh, the evolution, the upgrade of the human consciousness. Adepts had known in such things for centuries beyond count, but the sort of insight is very difficult to communicate to those who have not experienced higher levels of consciousness and are as yet unwilling to believe that anyone else can either. But now, but now the world has the advantage of empirical evidence of the truth of these insights demonstrated in finding of your scientists. A primary re revelation of physics is that there is no real foundation for we we call what we call physical reality. It merely t uh, tapers off into nothingness. So when they go to look in their reality and and, and look at how far it exists. Or whatever, or just looking back in time, it simp it simply just tapers off like into nothingness. So this this you know, uh, like 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 they say in the Bible, there is no beginning or end to this consciousness. It's indescribable. It's incomprehensible. It's talking about consciousness. When you're hearing that being uh, implemented in your in the Bible, that's what it's talking about consciousness. For our ancestors could not put this into words. But they, they put it in allegorical uh, terms in, in, in the best way they understood it to teach us about it. The ancients did. But now we have scientists and psychologists who know this language. They can educate us more on what it is. Okay? Space and time are not actualities. They are perceptions. A framework in which a world can be experienced as a linear series of things and events. It's just it's almost like a, a um a video game sort of like a virtual reality that we're creating. That's it's sort of just like that. That that is really what when once you start understanding that and your consciousness starts shifting, you'll just see how much you are creating. Okay, uh, let's go on. Space and time are only an illusionary theater in infiniteness of the absolute. The stage, the lights, the scenery, the props, they are nothing more than fa fantastism, fantastic, yeah, fa fantastic, there you go, fantastic symbols to create, to correlate, cognize what we experience. Ordinary consciousness perceive, perceives the threads as individual and separate. Only in the higher orders of reality does one begin to perceive the threads as an integral integral parts of an infinite tapestry of unity we're just expressing each other in different forms okay the intuitive among your scientists are uncovering knowledge that could be said to be spiritual in content in particular when it when investigating the phenomenon called non-local the deeper the deeper they probe the greater the likelihood that more and more will recognize this and as you have begun to experience through understanding and applying certain principles of consciousness, energy may be commanded to create a truly extraordinary range perceived and experienced reality. But to reach this recognition and realization that is the making real of such abilities, one must first break the illusionary boundaries of perception. There to realize a vastly expanded conscious awareness, one that goes far beyond the ordinary awareness of self and physical reality. So, you know, uh, it's, you know, you're going to have to turn down some of those old, old, you know, programming to be able to really master uh, imprinting upon in this consciousness and creating your own reality. Before someone can witness a demonstration of natural power, he must first be well familiarized with principles that enables him to comprehend it within a rational outlook. He should be at a point where he can see such power as being within the range of his own Latin case of, case of, uh, capacities. Once the true nature of the inner self is recognized, 
is recognized it is the case then a demonstration becomes a powerful tool in awakening a person to his potential most however exist in a state of ignorance hypnotized by the illusions of the space-time duality 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 rendered powerless by what they believe to be true and cannot see to be false confusing them further is simply not good practice so it's some people they they're going to be stuck in space and time they're going to be stuck in materialism they're going to be stuck in good evil bad you know bad good uh they're going to just be stuck in those duality black and white realities uh racism you know uh they're going to just be stuck in that you know that's just where it is at you know and and to wake them up you know it you'll be ridiculed called crazy whatever 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 you know uh sometimes you people just got to find it they have to go down this path on their own you know it's for you believe that a master uh often people um, let me see uh many people get in here and believe that a master is supernatural or of supernatural therefore vastly superior to them capable capable of things that are utterly and forever beyond them relieves that a person of the responsibility expending effort in their own behalf so we've got people that follow other people trying to leech on to their supernatural abilities thinking that they don't have the abilities um and this is so far for, from the truth okay any any person can achieve that same ability if they're willing to put in the same effort and time the intent desire and passion uh if they want to attain that master that's what we are all here to do okay we're all here to get to our own christ self i talk about that in christ consciousness and i talk about how our ancient ancestors uh you know map the evolution of consciousness through astrology you know th this what this is all about uh this this um I, t I talked about that in my archetype video but you know this is what this is all about such things are not initiated on the physical plane they are accomplished through thoughts images which work in higher levels those levels compose a creative mat matrix from which all apparent physical reality emer emerges so initiation comes in when you start shifting your levels of consciousness to this those are your real initiation process the ritual the physical ritual does not it does nothing but ritualize the mental consciousness that you have already been through but the mental consciousness uh, uh initiation is more important more than the ritual just because you do the ritual doesn't mean that you have already shifted to that consciousness the ritual is nothing but a uh it's just a version of of the level it, it signifies it symbolizes that you have already shifted that consciousness so our ancestors had a ritual put in place to symbolize that that initiate that uh your consciousness being initiated to another level the rituals do nothing but symbolize that okay uh let me go on reality is not something you can measure or comprehend with the mind it is if it even exists all we are concerned with is that our ideas and techniques based on our concepts allows us to manifest power in the world around around us our minds interpret the input from our senses by making models of the outside world we form mental concepts of our home our mountains trees valleys rivers lakes and other people and all else the object of physical reality are mere symbols and the mental concepts and the mental concepts the only thing we can directly know there is no independent test of ultimate reality thoughts images images form the rel relative reality we experience so it follows that that a that a symbol or model while it believes in creates a reality of its own okay the information exists in the consciousness in our minds not on the pages when we talk our words and convey thoughts and feelings but those thoughts and feelings are not the same as the words are they 
We agree on the meaning of the words so they become transmitters of information. The words are not themselves information. The letters on the page make up words. But those letters and words are nothing but symbols. This page is a paper and pencil mark. If you burn it, does it destroy the information? Does it destroy meaning? No, it only destroys the symbol. So it is, you know, it's a way, it's just like a computer, uh, a codes in the computer. We've learned, that's really what language is. The same way they have programmed the computer, uh, these words and letters, that's the way we have programmed ourselves. That's the way we program and receive information and receive knowledge. And that's how we're able to share it with each other, if you look at it from that perspective. This constant creation of physical reality through thoughts and mental images is what we do. All of us, it is a realization that we are doing it in attainment of the ability to do it. Knowing purpose and intent provides actual power and freedom. This is how our tradition views the true nature of physical objects. And this is why we can manipulate physical reality through technique. Okay? A construction of reality simply means the way you organize what you choose to perceive as the reality around you. You create your existence in its, in its physical setting. You then structure all of it with, a, with as much or as little organization as you find necessary at any point. The organization has an essential purpose to provide. Okay, so they're just letting you know that you are uh, uh, creating your reality. Uh, and I'm going on to uh, the potential of psychokinesis. I'm sorry. Uh, the content of your consciousness awareness is the content of your experience of what manifests as your outer reality. The inner manifests as the outer. So they're letting you know the inner world is creating your outer world. world. Consciousness creates everything except consciousness. Isn't that something? Consciousness accepts, uh, it, uh, creates everything but consciousness because this already is. It just is. Okay? It's creating everything else. So that lets you know your consciousness, what you is perceived, it is not your own. It is something, it is something else doing it. You know, just figure out where do your thoughts come? Have you ever asked yourself that? Where do your thoughts come from? How are you able to work your mind? How are you able to learn the things that you do? You know what I'm saying? How are you able to do that? You know, how are you able to do that? How are you able to speak? Do you, and these are, these are questions that we really don't ask ourselves. You know, we're too busy uh, using them and not taking the time to really figure out how we're able to use our minds and how our minds are able to learn things. And put things together even to remember words you know uh how you're able to read something that's not even spelled right but you know what it means the mind automatically picks it up you know or to read letters backwards you know how are our minds able to do that or count you know what i'm saying so ask yourself what is doing this you know what I'm saying? What is allowing you to use your your these 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 senses and, and your mind and stuff like that? What is allowing you to have a mind? You have a brain. I'm not talking about your brain. I'm talking about the workings of it. You know what I'm saying? Because we're talking about energy. What is making us have this con you know, this experience with it? Okay? So, you know, look at it from their perspective. I know many of you, if you understand that, I know many of you that that really gives you something to think about when you look at look, look at it from their perspective. Okay? Uh, do not forget your imagination is your greatest tool. Use it correctly with impeccable discipline. Through your imagination, the thoughts and images you entertain in your mind, you determine the outcomes that you experience. All the outcomes, all the circumstances and events in your life. So you're creating, that's why I said be very, very, you know, work your mind. Learn how your, your mind works. Learn the psychology of your mind and how it works. Because the more you're tapping in to your spiritual ability, your superpower, uh, as you want to call it, okay? 
that's what that that superhero stuff is all about it's about us tapping into this superpower of our mind okay and realizing that we're one with this consciousness and we have all these abilities okay uh and and, and we're closely getting we're getting closer and closer there uh each day it is significant to recognize that whatever outcome you aspire to experience is already real if it were not, you would not be capable of imagining or desiring it. But the discussion need wait in your sense of time, of course. For now, you must understand that you may attain the power to draw to yourself anything you desire, any event, any circumstance, any situation, any form, as easily as you draw breath and just as quickly. Okay, so once we stop, stop, I say that too about marching and protesting. Once we stop reacting and just start responding, and really focusing on us uh, tapping into this uh, this consciousness that we have the power to change things and just focus on that with your thought and your mind and your actions. Uh, you can transform, we can transform our reality and what we experience. Okay, and that's, that's, that's true. It's just that simple. It's really just that simple. It is the illusion that society is creating that is, th is, the, it, that is preventing this from happening. Okay. And see, this is the way the uh, uh, the Orishas explained it to me. The Orishas explained it to me the same same way. You know, material things are misnamed. They exist in your conscious awareness. Only so are not material at all. Matter exists in consciousness only, as does energy. Okay, all of this is energy. It took energy to do it. it it's made of energy, matter. Uh, you could read more about that the, during physics. They, they'll describe matter to you. Okay, in the old terms of the occult knowledge, we, we called it universal substance. And that is exactly... Uh, what they had the Orisha uh, explained it to me is a but I didn't know the I call it re re refined substance, but it is called universal substance. It's a watery refined substance. What is most important, I cannot overstress the importance of knowing what you call reality is unlimited fluid matrix. So it's fluid like, uh, you know how they have you seen that movie? Uh, what's that movie? Uh, uh, Terminator. Remember when that man was able to, to mesh with uh, mesh and turn into anything? Every time he laid his hand, you know, it was it was that metal that can transform into anything, like liquid metal. That's kind of like that fluid was. It, it could turn, you know, it could it could it could create anything. That's how that fluid was like. Uh, if you remember that movie, uh, uh, Terminator. I think that was Terminator too. Where the man, he, he, the metal, he can turn into anything. Turn his hand into a knife like that. That's how that, that, that fluid matrix was. Uh, something within which an unlimited range of things are possible. You must come to know how they are possible and why they are possible. And so uh, this universal substance is just like that. And what our thoughts do, when we learn to imprint and, and deal with this fluid, fluid matrix, we too can create out of this fluid matrix, whatever we want to experience. In that need, you know, that's the way, I hope, that, I hope that makes sense to you. You know, when you understand that the universe from this uh, scientific perspective and what consciousness really is, you know, and, and how we can go in and work with it, you can create more of your experiences, okay? Everyone, no matter how equipped, creates all of their all of their physical, emotional, and mental experience of life through the principle of consciousness. Yet most of all those individuals are entirely unaware of such power, far less that they ex exercise it continuously. All the events and circumstances in their life are of their own creation, but the creation occurs in an unrealized manner. By way, of they, by way of their primary beliefs and expectations regarding life and by way of their decisions. The choice is based upon their basic belief. So, so far, most, most of this process of creating represents 
little more than unthought, unexamined, ex unexamined default decisions. So when you don't uh, know this, you kind of set on default. So you feel like uh, life is really happening to you. Uh, I, I'm trying not to make this video long. I'm going to say this one thing. Perception continually creates uh, their experience, which in turn they allow to dictate their beliefs. There is nothing more absurd or more common than allowing experiences to create and reinforce beliefs. When it is beliefs that create experience, here is truly a vicious cycle. Such ingrained conditioning is extremely difficult to overcome, as you can easily see. Uh, and that's for you, for you religious people. It's, you know... Uh, it's going to take some work peeling back, you know, uh, tearing down those old beliefs. To access your true power require that you by bypass the intellectual mind conditioning and the resultant of the barriers, false concept beliefs enforced as it were by your rational and logical speculation. So this right now society is living out of a duality. Um, we're living out the left side of our brain okay we've been programmed to live out of the left head side of our brain not the true side of our brain which is the right side of our brain where everything is happening uh where where the imagination is creating everything you know this is where everything is being created from and what you have been uh what, what we have been programmed to believe is that uh that every, you know, out of the, out of the left, to, to believe everything that's real that we have created. To believe that it is real. But we already, you know, but our right hand side, right side of our brain know that we created it. We know that it's not real because our, our right side created it. We know that. But see, the left side of our uh, brain, it's like, it's real, you know, there's no way you could create this, you know. Uh, it, 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 it only believes what it sees. It only believes what it sees. And that's how we have been programmed. I hope that made sense. I hope I didn't confuse you. It only believes what it sees. But the a right side of our brain can see beyond what we can see. And it believes beyond what we see. Okay? And that's, and that's how, and, and it, the left hand side of the brain is, is, is uh, black and white. It's good and evil. It's all mixed up in duality. It's, it's belief system is based up in duality. And the universe is just, it, it doesn't operate like that. Everything is just energy on a spectrum. You know, it's energy on a spectrum. And once we understand that uh, and, and learning the power of our thoughts and what this uh, universal substance really is and how our thoughts are having an effect on that, uh, life becomes a lot more easier and we can really start shifting our consciousness to one of unity okay and create the type of world we want to experience okay reason and logic in of the, themselves are excellent tools but but cannot determine the difference between the true and the false the real the, and the unreal they will support and impose both equally and indiscriminately Expanding the awareness of intellectual mind whose false conditioning and false beliefs are deeply ingrained is exceedingly difficult process and highly dangerous. The intellectual mind holds tight to its patterns. It is very resistant, very resilient. It, on, it is only when such a conditioned mind beliefs are utterly shattered that it may go on to states of greater awareness. So... You know, are you holding on to some beliefs that's preventing you from uh, experience this greater awareness or upgrading or transcending? Uh, you know, you're going to have to work hard at doing that inner work. That, you know, the inner work is, is the most important thing. Okay? Uh, and this is the power of our minds. And, and uh, this is the powers of our mind. And this, and this amazes me because this is the way the Orisha, uh, they explain it as a universal substance into, uh, you know, a, a refined substance. You know, it was jello-like. Uh, and the way they explain it, it's like a matrix fluid. It is a fluid. And, and, and to hear them talk about it, 
the Orishas talked about it. They say everything in the universe is made of it. And to hear it, it really made sense when I read it in this book. So, uh, like I said, these meditation experiences are real. You will start to run into, if you question it, you will start to run into information to confirm some of your experiences. Okay? Uh, you just have to have, keep an open mind and, and stay open to it. Okay? Uh, but I just had to come share this book with you. I felt like it was helpful. Uh, if you want, I will, I'm going to leave some links here to this book. I really, I have more juicy stuff I've marked all through this book. I can, I, this video could really be longer, but I don't want to keep y'all longer. Uh, you know, oh, I, I, I could, I could keep you longer, but I don't want to keep you longer. Maybe I'll go make a part two on this video. Maybe I'll make a part two on this video, because there's so much, uh, juicy stuff in this book. But I'll leave the, uh... I'll leave the link here, uh, leave the information, uh, the, uh, the information on this book so you can go uh, look at it for yourself. We certainly need to be trying to find out how our mind works, find out what scientists are saying about consciousness, uh, find out uh, what psychologists are saying about consciousness, uh, really learning more about our spirit and our soul from a, a spiritual perspective. Uh, science point of view because our ancient ancestors were spiritual scientists you know uh on their uh, journey to spiritual scientists they had they discovered other science as far as uh, astrology and this other all this other stuff okay so the more we learn about these things and educate our ourselves on on these things uh it will allow the you know the upgrade or the evolution process or the awakening process to go so much easier, so much easier, if you that much easier for us. Uh, but I'm going to end this video. I thank you so much for following and subscribing and being here with me today. If you have any comments or questions or you just want to put your input and perspective on this video, you're more than welcome to leave your comments here and your insight here. I would love to uh, uh, see them, hear them. You know, I would love to see that. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, share it with someone. Like it. And thank you for being here. Light and love. May the ancestors be with you.